Hi all, welcome back. Next stage in the process, my battery packs are all ready to be put together and I'll just step you through the process of how I did it but everybody does it differently but still, nevertheless, I want to show you what I did to get to this point. 2,198 cells in a 14S 157P and as before, 157, we leave out three cells in each to slide under the bracket so we can extend out further but either way uh, now when you put them together just assure and just double check and make sure you have your layout correct because when I started my gap was in this row and lucky I didn't put them together uh, also check your batteries make sure they're reasonably clean like as far as all the stickers and all the bits and pieces because when you have the ring of paper or cardboard or whatever it is over them I noticed I had one of the batteries in the wrong way uh, because obviously I didn't see it properly but when you've got to this point anyway I would recommend strongly just take the time to check every single battery make sure it's the right way up now I've got not properly in because for some reason they are tight and I was moving them around and I didn't want to have to try and pull them out to try and put it back in. So now I've got to this point, I can do all my yellows around the edge, just the edges here, but I don't need to go here. Now some of them are already yellowed because I had them sitting there for a while. However, so if you're new to power walls, there's something you really got to understand is the internal resistance of a cell. They can have a resistance where what will happen is over time, the cell would self-discharge, meaning the power stored in it would disappear or start to less off. Uh, as a result, what you effectively got is a, a resistor in a pack with good cells. So you've got to eliminate that by when you test your cells, you get your measurement on the little tester, write it on the cell, let it set for a week I do everybody can do it different but I do a week if it drops below 4.1 volts I don't use it then I put it away for however many months I want the longer the better and when I test these packs that you see on the table here I had it testing uh, sitting I should say for all anywhere from the start of the year to now uh, as I was testing I was accumulating more but each battery would be at least a month sitting. Then if anything dropped below 4.08 volts, I won't use it. The reason for that is, if they drop too low and you've got a battery that is no good, it's dropping too far, it will pull the voltage of that pack down over time and hence BMSs. Uh, the BMS obviously is for making sure you don't go too high on a charge, too low on a charge but the thing is it will be stressing that BMS and eventually it will just drop the BMS won't keep up with it so what I did was I discarded them because I don't want to have to deal with uh, battery management system chasing done packs uh, as you're probably aware, I haven't got a BMS and I did do a manual balance on them just now but that's after quite some time and yeah, so when I first started that was not, that first half of that pack was not sitting for any rest. I didn't understand that, I didn't know that at the time but you let them rest, that's the key for having a good set of battery. So anyway, because I let them settle for all that time and then when I test, just before I put them in, I test it, I always test before I actually uh, take it out of the container and anyway long story short in this container I've discarded another 250 batteries that I don't want so if you're local I'm in southeast of Melbourne Victoria Australia so if you're local shouldn't have to say Australia if you're local and I have these batteries still reach out you can have them because uh, they're not good for the power or for my liking they will work because if you have some cells that are dropping too far, as long as you've got all the packs that have the same cell that's dropping to the same level, then 
then should be fine. However, you're wasting energy pumping into try and charge it up, so you're gonna waste. So yep, 4.08 is where I would absolute max let it drop. So what you do is, when you've got the batteries sorted and you know which ones you want, you put them in your packs, and as I was saying, you test it, you put them on your packs, and, and then you've got to make each pack the same value or very close. When you're dealing with something this size, then it, it doesn't matter if you have a few hundred milliamps out, probably even a couple of amps, really, uh, because in an ideal world, it should rise and fall the same on charge or discharge, but it doesn't, hence be a mess. So if you're out, there's no point getting it spot on because they're probably not going to play out in reality as they would on paper anyway. And you keep your parameters for your inverter at a top end charge lower than total charge. I set mine 4.1 total for each pack, which is 57.4 volt over the spread of the 14. And I set the inverter at about 46.5 thereabouts, and that allows the weakest pack to get to 3 volt. You don't want to go any lower than that because you start killing the pack and then eventually that pack will drop off and you'll have 13 packs which means you overcharge any one of the other 13. So I'll show you again how I did it. Uh, once again I'm going to show you how I did but it's not going to be the same for you. You can do it any way you want as long as you get to the end figure or end goal the same. That's the key, the end goal got to be the same. Uh, but yeah, we all do things differently, you know, the old saying, skin the cat more than one way. Anyway, I'll show you on the spreadsheet how I was doing the process. Now I do have a video to show how to make one of these spreadsheets. And this is pretty basic, no graphics, it just gets it done. So what I've done is, as I go down and fill up my battery packs, I put this here, which is a total amount of of milliamp per each pack. So far, I can say bank one, 329,280. So why I do that is, I'm keeping note which is the highest, which is the lowest. So as I go down and get close to the end, when you're starting, it doesn't matter so much. You, after checking your cells, keep them aside, the highest ones, some of, uh, or the lowest doesn't matter so far when you've put in so many you, let's say you do a row at a time then you go oh okay the lowest one could be this one I mistake so you put in a high cell and then once again if that's the lowest you can put in the low so all you're doing there is you're just trying to keep the spread between the highest and the lowest close together so when you get near the end you've got less where you got to swap them from high to low to make them even and then when I got near the very end I was taking it easy in every row, then every battery. And when I was on the last row, I had a spread of about 57 milliamps before I put the last battery in. So I got the last 14 batteries and I tried to keep the spread about that same distance. So I can say if that was the lowest, I put in the high cell and I laid them out on the table, you know, beside me working here where I will put them in order so I don't have to keep checking lowest to highest or whatever and then I put the lowest in for the highest pack and work my way down and as a result if you do it that way it is more tedious but it certainly beats swapping changing swapping it might be hard to uh, follow sometimes I don't explain too well but I hope that makes sense so doing this if I was a few hundred milliamps out that was going to be it I wasn't going to change it however doing it this way I actually got down the difference between the highest and the lowest pack, three milliamps. And that's damn good for 157p. As I was uh, reviewing my video, I noticed I said three milliamps spread between the highest and lowest. I noticed that was incorrect. Just to set it straight, I did notice it and checked it to see it being 22 milliamps between the highest and lowest spread. There it is now. If I'm still wrong, put in the comments down below. Now, on the table, I've got 17 kilowatts extra. And also, with all the batteries I had, thrown at 250, that's all I've got left. Now, if some of you out there love calculating, 
like figures, you'll probably work out there was about 2,059 milliamp on average for a cell in that 17 kilowatt. And I obviously used all my 200 milliamp, 2,000 milliamp and above. And then I started using below. And I was going from about 17 up, then I used 16s and I used 15s. And to really get the battery packs in tune to pull the highest one down lower, I actually did use a couple of 100, uh, 1000s just to bring it down quicker, make it easier. And the batteries, they do good, they are work, they do work, they are good, they do hold the charge without discharging. And you might say, well, all that hard work and using low cells, but the reality is this is recycling. If we're not going to use the lowest capacity and we're going to throw them out, discard them, we're not really recycling it anyway, so I'm not stressed for that. I used what I had, obviously I used the highest, but I used what I needed to get the job done. So anyway, I hope that all makes sense, and if you've uh, had fun watching this or learned something, please just hit the subscribe, encourage me to put out more videos. But until then, thanks again, and I'll see you next time.